Chapter 23. Knowing How to Listen. Inwardly, I was sorry that our conversation had been cut short. Laura's elucidations had uplifted my heart. Lysias entered the house visibly happy. Hi, haven't you gone to bed yet? He asked with a smile. And as the young men took their leave, he invited me cordially. Come out to the garden. You haven't seen the moonlight yet. Laura started talking to her daughters while I accompanied Lysias to the garden, which was in full bloom. What a superb spectacle. I was accustomed to the hospital's reclusion among large trees and had not yet glimpsed the marvelous picture of the moonlit night on display in the vast quarters of the Ministry of Assistance. Exquisitely colored gloxinias decorated the landscape. Snow-white lilies, slightly tinged with blue at the base of their cups, looked like goblets of fragrant perfume. I breathed deeply, feeling waves of new energy fill my whole being. In the distance, the spires of the government center displayed beautiful light effects. I was astonished and couldn't voice my feelings. I made an effort to express the admiration that had invaded my soul. I've never witnessed such peace. What a night. My companion smiled and explained, All of the well-balanced inhabitants of the colony have made a pledge to avoid emitting evil thoughts. Thus, the mental efforts of the majority have become an almost continual prayer, and the result is the vibrations of peace we are sensing. After I have fully delighted myself by contemplating that remarkable picture, as if I had been drinking in the light and peace of the night, we went back inside. Lysias approached a small apparatus that had been placed in the living room in a manner similar to radios on earth. My curiosity was aroused. What were we going to listen to? Messages from earth? Guessing my thoughts, my friend explained, No, we aren't going to hear any voices from the planet. Our broadcasts are based on vibratory forces more subtle than those on earth. But isn't there a way to pick up broadcasts from Earth? I asked aloud. Of course. We have the means of doing so in all the ministries. But in the home environment, our present condition is what really matters. Work-related information, news from higher spirituality, and lofty teachings are now much more important to us than any earthly thought. His remark rang true, but still bound by domestic ties. I asked... Do you really think so? What about the relatives we left behind, our parents, our children? I thought you would ask that, he replied. In terrestrial circles, we are often led to misinterpret situations. The hypertrophy of the sentiments is a malady for almost all of us, and we are old prisoners of exclusivist attitudes. We often regard our family as solely related to blood ties and forget our broader obligations. We live without taking the true principles of fraternity into account. We preach them to everyone, but when the time comes to practice what we preach, we usually help only our own loved ones. But here, my friend, the coin of life displays its other side. Here, We must heal our old infirmities and rectify our wrongs. We've been told that in the early days of the colony, every dwelling was connected to the centers of terrestrial evolution. That is, no one could bear not hearing news about their families. From the Ministry of Regeneration to the Ministry of Elevation, Nosolar's inhabitants lived in a constant war of nerves. A disturbing bit of news would often interfere with activities in general. But exactly two centuries ago, one of the generous ministers from Divine Union urged the government center to do something about the situation. The former governor had perhaps been too lax. After all, indiscriminate kindness encourages indiscipline and failure. And from time to time, news about their families down on earth would throw families here into a state of utter chaos. Whenever there were collective catastrophes on the planet, it somehow affected a number of spirits in Nasalar, since they became true public calamities here too. According to our records, the city was more like an area of the umbral 
than a region of proper rest and instruction. Supported by divine union, the governor forbade this widespread interchange, and a real struggle ensued. But the benevolent minister who had introduced the measure put Jesus' teachings into practice. Let the dead bury their dead. The innovation was soon victorious. I objected. But it would be interesting to get news about our dear ones in transition down on earth. Wouldn't it give us more peace of mind? Lysias had been standing by the receiver without turning it on. Seemingly interested in giving me a more detailed explanation, he added, Analyze yourself and see if that would really be the case. For instance, would you be able to maintain your peace of mind to wait in faith and act in accordance with the divine precepts while knowing that your dear child was either hurting another or being hurt himself? If someone told you that one of your brothers was now imprisoned as a criminal, would you be strong enough to keep calm about it? I smiled somewhat despondently. We shouldn't seek news from the lower planes, he continued obligingly, except when we can actually offer effective assistance. And we must bear in mind that no one can help effectively while emotionally or mentally imbalanced. That's why suitable preparation is indispensable before we can contact our families again. If they offered an adequate arena for spiritual love, such an exchange would be worthwhile. But the overwhelming majority of incarnates have not yet attained any amount of self-control whatsoever. Most of them live foolishly, swept in and out by the high and low tides of the material order. In spite of our feelings of concern, we must avoid falling into a lower vibratory orbit. However, displaying my petulant stubbornness, I asked, But Lysias, you have an incarnate relative. I mean, your father. Wouldn't you like to communicate with him? Of course I would, he answered kindly. Whenever we deserve the joy of doing so, we are able to visit him in his new physical body. Likewise, he can contact us. However, we mustn't forget that we are all fallible creatures. Thus, we need to bring our request before the right agencies and let them decide on the appropriateness or the merits of the case. The Ministry of Communication is in charge of such visits. It is important to keep in mind that it is easier to descend from a higher to a lower sphere. However, there are certain rules saying that we must properly understand the situation of someone who is in a lower zone. It is just as important to know how to listen as to know how to speak. Nasolar went through a time of trouble because its inhabitants didn't know how to listen and were thus unable to help effectively. Consequently, our colony was more often like a field of confusion. I grew quiet, defeated by this powerful argument. I curiously watched as the friendly nurse turned on the receiver.